recording. So welcome everyone. We'll have um, a restart of our uh, research and user group uh, finally after quite a long uh, stop. So just the topic today will be um, um, HPC and SLARM integration and uh, Edward will talk to us a lot about it. So I'll pass it to him quickly, but just a few items as I see quite a lot of people joining. If you can add your um, your uh, name to the attendees here in the Google Doc that I, I, I put in the, in the chat. Um, we'll go through uh, introductions for, for those that are joining for the first time, the group, just to know each other. Uh, one thing I will just mention before is that uh, we're looking for a new co-lead for, for the group. Jamie moved to other other roles. So if you would like to, to help out, uh, it's mostly uh, around keeping a healthy backlog of topics to be presented and, um, and then reaching out to speakers. Uh, that's pretty much it. So if you, if you would like to help, I'm glad to onboard. And eventually, um, I will be glad also to delegate to, to, to others to take over. So we can start with integration uh, introductions. I see Dennis, uh, Priyanka, you are joining for the first time as well. <laughs> That's right. That's yeah. awesome. Now I'm scared because I actually have a slide with Priyanka face. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't worry at all. Um, awesome. Nice to be here, folks. Thanks for letting me hang out. Awesome. Uh, then we have Dennis, first time. Yes, hello. Is the sound working? Probably, hopefully. Yep, yep. <laughs> can hear you. Yes. Uh, you're from where? From Finland, from Aalto University, or my employer, doing awesome. my master's thesis studies, working with HBC Solar Integration. Amazing. Thank you. Uh, we have Nikos. You presented, but yeah, as an attendee, do you want to say something? Do we have your sound? I see his microphone is green, but we don't hear him. Right, we can come back to him and then Raj. Test. Ah, we can hear you. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, okay, how to configure my microphone. Uh, yep, yeah, so this is my second time joining. Well, in technically it's the first. The first time I joined was about two years ago when I presented Containers as Aids, my project in the CNCF to the user group. And yeah, I work on CERN uh, alongside with Ricardo. Awesome. And Raj? Check his microphone. I don't see him in the list. Ah, uh, no. Okay, can come back to it after. Anyone else? First time, Davide. Do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. Davide Pastorino from Italy here. Uh, we are here with uh, two of my, of my colleagues because we were curious about the Kubernetes and Slurm integration talk. As we uh, we are a company that specializes in uh, HPC uh, based in Italy, and I am a solution architect, so I'm very interested in uh, integration with Kubernetes and Slurm. Awesome. Piers, I see a few people adding first time as well. Take the chance. Here's his microphone. No, he has no microphone, but he's okay. But Piers is from the SKA office, and he was also in our uh, end user uh, uh, booth at the last KubeCon. He was staffing the, the, the booth as well. And I think, uh, did I miss someone? Uh, Bitze? Yeah, Vitz Albus, also the first time here uh, working for SURF. 
as uh, the Dutch NREN, uh in the uh, multi-cloud uh, group. So uh, we are developing, uh, yeah, Kubernetes uh, clusters, and we are looking uh, how to integrate it with uh, HP HPC facil facilities. So uh, that's the reason to be here. Awesome, you're at the right place. All right, Diego, uh, we have two demons. Diego back in. Hello, I'm Diego Bakin. I'm working uh, with uh, David in Duit System and uh, I'm a solution architect in APC. And I'm here to, to listen to the talk about the Kubernetes and uh, Slurm integration. Awesome. And Matteo? Hello, everybody. Um, I'm also here uh, to, to listen to the talk. I'm a colleague uh, um, with uh, David and uh, Diego in the Duit system, it's a company based in, in Italy. So, Amazing. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you everyone for uh, for joining today. Uh, we'll we'll have a few uh, a few of these sessions upcoming, so this will be pretty interesting. Uh, I will stop sharing, and I guess uh, Eduardo, you can start. And thanks yes. again for um, for for giving us this introduction. Anytime. So uh, thank you, Ricardo, for inviting me. Uh, this uh, is kind of like a a post KubeCon presentation. I had the opportunity to to share this idea with Ricardo. Uh, someone that is here on I, I see on the uh, participants, but is not on the Google Doc is Ange Beltre. So I, I have been working with Ange. He works at uh, Sandia National Labs in the North America in the US. And we have been brainstorming this idea on how can we better integrate uh, that old school HPC systems and the new cloud native. So I, I call this presentation Cloud Native Slurm. And it's uh, our point of view or uh, like the way that we see Slurm integrating into cloud native ecosystems different from uh, current implementations that are out there. I, I just, uh, this is kind of like my take on, on it. Uh, who am I? I have quite a bit of HPC experience. I started doing containers for HPC at Sidelabs for those who know Singularity containers. So I, I was kind of like the initial contributors there. Then I moved to OpenShift, trying to get OpenShift to work for HPC environments. And now I work at NVIDIA doing uh, similar to what I did at OpenShift, but now for uh, focused on accelerators. So I, I'm now focused on helping people to get their GPUs working in Kubernetes and not just working, but at the scheduling level, right? Like uh, how to optimize resource uh, consumption from it. So that's kind of like a bit of background of who am I and uh, why I, I'm very passionate about this topic. Uh, so I, I will carry an agenda on like what is, what, what efforts do we see in the Kubernetes ecosystem? What is Slurm? What is KCP? And then the final idea. And I, I will open the, the room for some Q&A. So Kubernetes HPC efforts, right? Uh, sometimes it feels like this, right? Like Kubernetes is awesome, but we are somehow trying to use it for things that it was not built to, right? So uh, there is a lot happening to make Kubernetes work for uh, AI ML for these big distributed workloads. So then we get into this ecosystem and this is like the perfect week to talk about this, right? Like uh, we have right now for those who are uh, signed to the mailing list, we have two new working groups that are busy. That is the working group serving and the working group uh, accelerator management. And to me, this is all part of the same, right? Like, there is a growing need to, to make cloud native better for, for HPC in all sorts of ways. AI ML, that is like the, the buzzing uh, word uh, right now, but like we have here Ricardo that he's from CERN. So like we wanna use uh, Kubernetes for scientific real purposes, right? Like curing cancer or looking at the stars or many other things we are getting to do with Kubernetes, but we are realizing that Kubernetes was not designed for that and that we need to to Kubernetes to get it to do what we want. But to me, it's surprising, like, why 
putting so much effort into twisting Kubernetes to do something if there are other tools that already do it. So it's because Kubernetes provides that uh, developer friendliness, right? Like, so that's where we are here and we want, we want to move everything into a cloud native way of doing things. Uh, there are some good things that have come out of these uh, efforts, like this working, uh, like this uh, research user group, or like the working group bash, uh, new tools like Q, like the job set, uh, patterns like the scheduler plugin that allows you to kind of like inter interject into Kubernetes way of thinking, uh, projects like the Flux framework operator, but all of them fall short on what a real HPC system is today, right? So if we compare uh, Q to what a Slurm is or to a, a like Torque or a ACC Condor, uh, those tools have been tested and proven for like these high scale systems on where Kubernetes is still growing to get there. Uh, another thing that I want to point out is that Q, the job set, they are pre-scheduling tools, right? Like uh, Q and the job set help you to optimize on a pre-scheduling decision. Once Q releases the job, right, like for those, I, I'm not going to get into much of how Q works, but basically Q pauses a job and then it, it unpauses the job once some things have been checked out and then it handles the job to the Kubernetes scheduler, right? Like, and what is, once the job is on Kubernetes scheduler hands, it's like we cannot do much on it. There is a scheduler plugin, but the thing that I don't like about the scheduler plugin for Kubernetes is that you end up in a situation on where you have to uh, synchronize two schedulers and two states of the world, right? You have to be moving information from Kubernetes to whatever you have in your scheduler plugin. So your uh, scheduler or your dis uh, decision management is aware of how the system is going, like if well, which nodes are su super utilized, which nodes are not that much utilized. So the scheduling decision is optimized, right? So like, that's why I don't like the scheduler plugin because you land into this synchronizing two schedulers and two and state managers at the same time. And that can get into a lot of errors because I've been there. And that also can get you a not optimal situation when you want to do high performance scheduling, right? Uh, as a community, we also have, oh, that was not good. We also have the MPI operator. That is a great tool that it's, uh, was developed for uh, Qflow and now is kind of like being proposed as a standalone tool because it is very important for AI, AI ML training, mostly when we are doing this distributed training or for any scientific tools I have seen even people trying to do like bioinformatics in on top of Kubernetes using the API operator. So uh, a quick introduction to Slurm and uh, now, hey, Priyanka. <laughs> uh, so sadly, the YouTube recording of Priyanka saying that she loved Slurm was cut. So I kind of like hack it here. Uh, but it's really amazing when, when Priyanka goes and mentions that Slurm plus Kubernetes is like the right of doing things not like one on top of each other or like those weird mixes that we have seen some projects out there, but trying to get them to live side by side is, is a good approach, right? And this just happened two weeks ago during a key, uh, KubeCon keynote, right? Like something that the HPC ecosystem was not even aware of, right? Like I was chatting with someone from uh, SkateMD, a Slurm company. I was like, hey guys, your logo was at the keynote and they were not even aware of that, right? Like this is fresh. So we as a cloud native community, we are realizing that we need this and we need uh, a community solution on how can we use Slurm when we need it and for the things that Slurm has been designed to do for over 20 years and then fall back to Kubernetes for everything else. But it's not just like falling back and killing Slurm and, and turning it on and off every time we need it, but a way that we can use Slurm as another tool, right? Like, for those that have seen the cloud native uh, landscape is a growing sheet that at some point I think they're going to start selling uh, actual uh, bed sheets for everyone because it's, it's so huge. But what is Slurm? For those that know the Kubernetes architecture, if you really look this picture like from really, really, really far away, it's kind of the same, right? Like it's the control plane, 
is the nodes and is the API server, kind of, right? So we have the Slurm D in this picture, the yellow part, will be to the Kubernetes people, will be kind of like the API server, right? Like is, is the most important thing where all, all the other components kind of like reach back to. And we have the Slurm DVD, that is a, a database that to Kubernetes uh, ecosystem people would be ITSI, right? Like this would be kind of like the ITSI where all the state is managed and is stored there. And we have the, the demons and we have the nodes and we have uh, like all sort of CLI tools for interacting with Slurm depending on the things that you are doing, right? Like Slurm has this uh, very optimized way on like if you're running just a batch job or you're just doing a, like a S run or if you're doing an MPI job or you're just queuing or you're checking how the queue is going, they have different uh, CLI tools for it. On where uh, in the Kubernetes ecosystem, we have kubectl for kind of like everything, right? Like we have this one tool to interact with everything. And it's one of the things that we like from Kubernetes, right? like this uh, single API to manage them all. But why is Lorm is so awesome? Slurm supports PMIX. As Lorm supports MPI on these largest HPC clusters, right? like uh, these things that we read on the news that they win uh, awards and that, that it requires like a full city electricity for a day just to keep these uh, systems running uh, versus on Kubernetes, we have never read kind of like a system that big, right? Uh, as Lorm supports containers uh, pretty well, right? So you can run from Singularity and uh, other HPC-based containers. It also supports regular Docker and Podman, uh, what we in the cloud native ecosystem are used to, right? What got me into this idea? As learned recently, when I said recently, like in the last couple of years, not like so fresh, they introduced as learned REST API. So as Lorm REST API is a, a open API compatible, a 3.0 compatible, it's a stateless. So it's just like basically you, you do a request and it throws you the, uh, like what happened to that request, but it's not like storing a cache or saving anything that is happening during the API calls. It has two modes in it. Basically, you can talk to the Slurm REST binary and get it to do things or you can do it as a Unix socket or a TCP that is constantly listening from uh, from calls on a specific port. That, uh, this is the part where I'm going to focus on. That's why it's highlighted here. On the security side, it supports uh, JSON web tokens for authentications. And you can have like multiple users, which to Kubernetes will be kind of like mapped to what we have as service accounts, right? So this is where we are already starting to see that we can have some mapping between what a Slurm can provide via REST APIs, that is what we like at the cloud native ecosystem, right? like doing everything via APIs. And how can we, from a cloud native ecosystem that we like API, we can start calling a Slurm using the API, right? And we have this really nice tool that we as a community have been building that is called KCP, a project that was born pretty much during the pandemic, because it was born like during the 2020, 2021. And it's a Kubernetes-like control plane without nodes or pods, right? So it's a very interesting picture. Uh, this was one of the talks that they gave in the last KubeCon on where KCP is basically a, a way to have a uniform API to communicate with any platform, right? Like you have a platform that you wanna expose via an API and an API that we all know that is the Kubernetes API using Kine and using uh, YAML because we all love to have our laptop full with YAML. So uh, KCP help us do that, right? Like it help us put a, a, a API from like from facing to any platform you want, right? But how does that look like, right? It's basically, a very stripped down version of Kubernetes is a control plane with API server, controller manager, because the controller manager is pretty much the secret source or the magic be behind Kubernetes, right? Like it's what we all love to build operators and controllers and this reconcile, reconcile loop is what allow us to do that. It has ITSI and we can then build custom controllers just utilizing this. Like this is a, a high level view of what KCP is. Kubernetes without pods, without containers, without nodes. Once you deploy KCP in your laptop, 
if you try to do like kubectl, it, it gives you a, a, a kube config, by the way. Once you deploy KCP, it gives you back a kube config, a regular kube config. But if you do kubectl get nodes, it will fail. Like it will actually throw an error. If you do kubectl get pods, it will throw you an error. But it actually knows about secrets uh, or back, like anything like a uh, role, role by role binding, all of that is still there. It has namespaces and it has the most magical thing, custom resource definitions on which we can build controllers and we can then get crazy doing whatever we want. Now, how do we get to Cloud Natives Learn? So after uh, I show it, Homer in the first slides is like, after breaking everything, trying to make Kubernetes be an HPC platform, why not using this tools that we as a community and the Cloud Native have built to make a Slurm interact with Kubernetes, right? So now we are basically putting a translator next to a Slurm so a Slurm can sit down at the same table with Kubernetes and they can share information, but they sit on different sides of the table, right? Like they are different clusters. They don't have to manage or synchronize a state of the cluster because they are their own clusters. And then you can run Slurm optimized for what it is optimized, and then you can have Kubernetes side by side. Using uh, tools like uh, that's why I put here uh, infra provisioner. There are multiple tools out there from uh, in the HPC side of the house that we have uh, Werewolf, or we have uh, what used to be Bright Computing that's now inside of NVIDIA, uh, or many other tools that they can help you re-provision uh, a node very quickly to a, a cloud provisioner. Like you can just move uh, uh, AWS, uh, Google, or Azure machine to be uh, one type of node to another type of node, right? So you can have two clusters and just like change nodes. So make your Kubernetes cluster bigger or make your Slurm cluster bigger, but then just have a single API, like a single control plane on which you deploy jobs and you can have a smart, like a, a smart router here in the middle that says, if this job is, uh, let's say like an MPI job, just send it to a Slurm. And the good thing is that you can send the entire YAML as we right now know for the MPI operator that we have a, a already defined MPI job when using the MPI operator. You could just throw the entire YAML to the uh, Slurm KCP cluster and we will have a controller that will translate that into a regular Slurm job using a Slurm API, right? Like there is no need for extra complicated things or like Kubernetes managing pods of a Slurm and trying to synchronize the state of the world, but it's a, uh, it's a, a standalone Slurm cluster that understands Kubernetes YAML, right? So it's a uniform API because we can have a, a single control plane it will enhance developer interaction because we will just do YAML as we like to do YAML. It is multi-queue compatible. Right now, the queue project is exploring this multi-queue option on where you have a small cluster, as we see here on the slides. And uh, queue is basically deploying jobs to all the clusters. And then on the other side, the Slurm KCP will get the job, and if the job is compatible, it will run it, and it will communicate back to Q that the job was accepted, right? So that's how multi-queue works. It will query each cluster that it has on its list, asking like, can you run this job? Can you run this job? And we will tell multi-queue like, yeah, I can run the job, because Slurm will now understand YAML, right? And it's cloud and on-prem compatible. We can still have nodes and jobs concept, right? Because uh, a Slurm on, on its API, it provides a way to query a Slurm about the state of the nodes. So we can uh, communicate that back to a central control as uh, or uh, another talk that was really nice, not, not to like self-promote myself, but we as a community are promoting a cluster inventory API that will live in this uh, higher level control plane. And then we could communicate to this uh, cluster inventory API how my, cluster, my Slurm cluster is going, how many nodes do I have, how many nodes are healthy, uh, the uh, CPU utilization, all of that in a, in a way that other Kubernetes components understand. So we, don't, we can just translate from the cluster out and we don't need to be uh, 
complicating things, synchronizing the state of the world between uh, a SLORM a scheduler and Kubernetes scheduler. How it would look like internally? Once we communicate with KCP, that is going to be the, the front facing control plane, uh, KCP will have a controller running that will translate all the YAML into a SLORM API. Once everything is translated into a SLORM API, it becomes a regular SLORM workflow on where a SLORM is going to communicate, a SLORM REST is going to communicate with a SLORM uh, internal co command uh, controllers, and it will deploy the jobs to the compute nodes. So uh, it will basically look kind of as we know uh, Kubernetes architecture, but it's now uh, a SLORM. And we can communicate with a SLORM via Jam. Uh, the roadmap for this project, uh, the proof of concept, I think is uh, the same with public repo. I think we will be open sourcing it in a couple of months uh, since my friend Angel, that I think is still here, is from a national laboratory. We have to request some permissions and things like that because I think Sandia is like a, a weapons lab or something like that in the uh, politics that I don't want to get everyone into it. But we are requesting for all the required permissions and things like that to open source it. And we will be open sourcing the proof of concept really soon so uh, everyone can run it, uh, can run a demo. And we plan to have a paper submission for the uh, supercomputing conference uh, and KubeCon uh, North America in November. So that's uh, kind of like now my idea on how this is going. And uh, now I open to questions. Awesome. Thanks, Eduardo. I think there will be uh, quite a few questions. Uh, feel free to drop them in the chat or raise your hands. And uh, I will. I will. I will take notes in the in the minutes as well. Anyone? I will start. Talk? I will start by apologizing with Priyanka. <laughs> I had you in the slides. Oh, don't apologize. I was honored. I was not expecting that. <laughs> Any question to start? Otherwise, I can ask one, and then we. Ah, yeah, Giuseppe. Yes. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm uh, I'm uh, Giuseppe from Surf. Uh, Surf is a uh, Dutch national kind of IT research uh, center, and um, yeah, I'm the, I'm the program manager for for cloud and edge technology. Now, after this uh, <laughs> introduction, uh, we are we are trying to solve a problem. Basically, our problem is how do we fractionalize our supercomputer and how Kubernetes can help. Uh, doing that, so one of the one of the the, the angle that uh, I would try to understand in, the, in this project is um, what problems are, are we trying to to solve? Because I see, I might see the problems for for our research uh, community, and I would like to to understand when you approach this project, what was the problem that you wanted uh, to solve? That maybe it's a bit of a generic question, but. I want to see if it's aligned with our strategy and agenda. Yeah, I yeah, I can start with that. Uh, again, uh, I think I'm going to waste his name. Uh, so Angel, I see him here in the list. Uh, he's in a laboratory where like a 100,000 nodes is just like the beginning of a research. So Kubernetes is still not made for that. And they want to run these huge MPI jobs or these huge deployments. And they want to also use these new technologies like PMIX that is still not supported by the MPI operator. And that kind of like forced them to still use SLORM. But all their developers and the new researchers, they want to use Kubernetes. And they are also running Kubernetes internally for some like CI CD testing and uh, like minor things, right? But the new researchers, the new developers, they want to use Kubernetes and they know how to use Kubernetes. But then they face that their cluster where they are going to run their actual research is this big old thing. Not saying that Slum is, is all, it's just that to the new researchers, the new people, it looks like all, right? So what if we can have the best of both worlds? Right? Like what if we can give this new wave of researchers, new wave of developers, uh, a front-facing uh, interface that they know that they are used to managing the YAML, 
And then we, the ops side of the house, we manage things, right? Like we have these interfaces where we translate YAML into a Slurm native objects or a Slurm API, right? So the, the need that got us to this idea is that we have these clusters that have been running Slurm for years and they are not going away and they cannot be reprovisioned into Kubernetes clusters in the next 10 years or so, right? Like it's, it's, these are like long running projects. So it's like, how can we interact with that Slurm cluster? Because we know we cannot reprovision it, uh, but how can we give it like a fresh look with a cloud native tool? Yeah, thanks uh, Thanks for, for the answer. I just want to add one last thing and then I'll, I'll shut up. It's, uh, it's great because I think we are, we are uh, aligned also from, from our perspective uh, as a serf. But I have another another follow up question. Uh, one of the I am a Kubernetes guy by you know by you know the, uh, background, uh, but we always had lots of cultural problems when we discuss Slurm and HPC. In the community of HPC is very uh, let's say conservative, and. Uh, from our point of view, it, it looks like we are trying to explain why things could be better uh, with, with the Kubernetes architecture. But I don't know for you guys, but for us, it's kind of an uphill uh, cultural battle. And if you have any 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 tip or any point of view on that, uh, we 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 can gather our forces together, you know, to to be more friendly. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I think I can start, but Ricardo or Priyanka can't follow here. Uh, I used to be a hard on like Kubernetes everything person for quite a few years. But, and even that I come from like a old school HPC, right? Uh, but now I understand that we have tools for everything. And that's why I said that Homer uh, a slide at the beginning where Homer is trying to use a drill for hammering a nail. Uh, we like Slurm is there. Slurm is perfect. It has been going for 20 years. It runs on like top supercomputers. Why we want to twist Kubernetes to do what Slurm already does? We like at the cloud native ecosystem, we are already used to having this huge landscape of like there are thousands of projects. We, you just choose what like you have a need and you go and pick from the landscape and you use uh, a tool to solve your need. Right? Like we don't twist the existing solution to solve a problem. We just go and choose a tool. Why don't we just add a Slurm to this, to this big cloud native uh, landscape? A Slurm logo should be there, right? So instead of trying to twist many tools and Kubernetes to do what a Slurm is doing, it's just like get a Slurm into the cloud native landscape, uh, big shit, and then a way for Kubernetes and all the other tools to interact with Slurm, and then Slurm becomes just another tool on, on the ecosystem, right? Like it's just a tool. So that, that's my point of view with this project, right? Like I want to get Slurm to be in the uh, cloud native landscape and to be seen as just another tool, right? Like Slurm is a tool because inside Slurm, you also use other tools like MPI and PMIX. They are not part of Slurm. They are separate projects that you then use. So it's like, uh, that's my point of view now. Yeah. I think Priyanka, that, do you want to add something? Yes, uh, I'll just, I'll say that cultural challenges are very real. Uh, the good news though, is that we have all been battling them in different areas for so many years now. Uh, when Kubernetes was open sourced, uh, in 2014, the whole question was, oh, developers are separate from operations, right? And the whole shift to the DevOps mindset or the SRE mindset where engineers were also <coughs> in operations took a while. And uh, a lot of folks uh, on the on both sides, whether it was the sysadmin or the uh, business logic developers were resistant. So I would guess that the kind of resistance you're facing, Giuseppe, is uh, with your researchers is similar to that. Um, and at least based on past experience, what I can say is that 
as more and more new researchers, developers start going into this field, and as Eduardo was saying, they are more Kubernetes native and they want to use it, the Slurm folks will slowly see that, oh, this expands my influence, this expands my impact. Um, and there will always be a small contingent that will never want to be at all involved. And that's fine. That's their choice to make. And you cannot convert everyone. But it will be a slow and steady uh, trickle, I would say. So my advice is just keep at it. Keep presenting uh, stories of success, of how new use cases have been developed by using these technologies. And everybody likes to have success, and they will follow along. And be patient, because it'll take a while. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thank you. It's nice uh, to not be alone in this uh, adventure. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I, I don't think you're definitely not. You're, you're definitely not alone. Uh, we have a similar experience internally. We have new workloads that got used to having Argo workflows and using all the tooling on top of Kubernetes that makes things much easier. GitOps uh, kind of deployments, and uh, now we face the need to to access a lot of the resources that everyone wants, like GPUs that are uh, backed by supercomputers and Slurm clusters. And we have to find a way to, to bridge between the two. Internally, we have the same issue. Dennis, you have your hand. Go ahead. Yes, this is also quite relevant to my work. So at Alt University, I'm working closely with uh, the Finnish uh, um, Center for Scientific Computing, so CSC, specifically on the Lewis supercomputer, on how to get uh, kind of the Kubernetes integration going there. Because we're we're facing a really interesting challenge, is that um, most of the 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 code that is being executed on Lumi right now is very GPU heavy. So all of the GPU time is basically utilized, and we are mostly idling the very powerful CPUs that that machine also has. And people are really interested in, in finding solutions on how to utilize those CPU side resources while the GPUs are doing are busy doing simulation work or LLMs or, or whatever you have. And for the CPU side, people really want to do dynamic uh, bursty workloads and maybe something really complex like running a Kafka and Spark or something like that in, in parallel. And for this purpose, uh, the, the, we have this similar conflict that that the, the researchers are really interested in. In I, pro I brought up Kubernetes as sort of a way to, to deploy these systems very easily. However, um, the the actually getting Kubernetes and this ecosystem running on that supercomputer. I've gone back and forth with CSC quite a lot, and there's this resistance in the mindset, and they are stuck with their with their software visions and, and what they can support on those nodes. So having something like KCP or Interlink, which will be the topic of our future talk in this, in this um, use group as well, uh, will be sort of a key enabler of of seeing that Kubernetes success. So my my goal is essentially to uh, provide a, an intermediate a kind of bridge to to bridge this HPC HPC world and and the Kubernetes space before we can eventually then maybe just run playing Kubernetes on the on the HPC nodes all together and and skip all of the intermediate parts but something kind of we need an intermediate layer to to like uh priyanka mentioned to show this success and be able to evaluate it in the current context and this is kind of a, a really important focus of my work at the moment excellent this is a very good discussion uh, any other question i see a couple on the on the chat but feel free to raise your hand if you want to ask them directly. If not, I can ask that. Uh, you, Bai, or Brian? Do you want to go ahead? Brian, you have your hand raised, or Sanjay? Yeah. Ah, OK, Brian. Can you go. hear me? Yeah. I can, yeah. Okay, sorry, I just unmute. So, uh, yeah, very good talk. 
So I hear some keyword here. Um, uh, it's a, we try to uh, to introduce Kubernetes on uh, HPC or supercomputer or HPC uh, 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 data center or on premise. But actually, I come from a, the Kubernetes world, and uh, we try to benefit from all these. Uh, we, we try to find the HPC capability within the Kubernetes. Actually, we are using a managed Kubernetes like uh, AKS, GKE. So for me, there are two major issues today. One is um, we try to utilize the, the unlimited cloud resource. So which means that we uh, rely on the cluster auto scheduling feature. So which means we need the computing and we can quickly uh, provisioning the environment and uh, deploy the image and uh, run our comp computing workload there. And when we finish, we just uh, uh, decommission all the uh, environment. So I'm not sure for this, uh, um, by introduce uh, Slurm integration, will that help on this uh, direction? Or because this is really a, our bottom neck today, like how fast we can having a 500 node uh, HPC cluster being uh, be ready on on this on this uh, cloud. I'm not sure if this is for uh, this on demanding or auto scaling uh, direction, or we talk about really for a traditional uh, supercomputer or the the data center environment. Eduardo, do you want to answer? Yeah. So yeah, if if you are Cloud native person because that's uh, is like the slurm conversation is mostly for uh, as others have jumped to say like they are from a university or a research environment where they have this on prem not a cloud on prem uh, cluster is like thousands of nodes and it has uh, like a predetermined uh, software installation and it has to be running for the next 10 years because it's under contract and things like that. So it's like, it's really hard to move from a slurm to another thing, right? So that's that's why uh, people like Dennis or uh, I forgot the first question uh, name. Uh, we want to have a way to interact with a slurm from cloud native tools, right? Like from Kubernetes or other cloud native uh, tools. But if you are, uh, just on uh, on the clouds and you have you want to have a 500 nodes slurm system i think you can get those from google and azure i i seen some products from google and azure where you can get like uh, slurm clusters on demand and i mean if at some point you want to have a kubernetes cluster and a slurm cluster all in the cloud running and you want to move information to one and the other, you are going to face the situation we are facing like in today's presentation, that is how, how I make these two ecosystems interact, right? So that's how I see you being able to utilize Slurm, right? Like uh, going to this uh, cloud hosted Slurm. Yeah. Yes, thanks for the explanation. I think the, so when we, the, <clears throat> I think in the last five years when the CPU uh time we 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 maybe we can do this uh, on demand cloud but when the gpu come into this uh, ai journey the gpu is really a limited resource probably this uh, will do more help for the even we are on cloud we cannot really uh, really get uh, gpu sometime really uh, just uh, on demand we need to reserve the gpu for like a one year or three year contract to uh, benefit i think for that situation the cloud native more turn to a similar to this uh, supercomputer or on premise uh, in a situation so i see the value for this uh, project can extend it to the cloud environment yeah thank you awesome so i see a couple of hands raised uh, Sanjay is the Sanjay. next. Yeah, Sanjay. Yeah. Uh, hey, uh, <clears throat> can you hear me? Yes. Oh, all right. Uh, nice presentation, Edward. Uh, so, a couple of questions. One is, uh, when you talk about moving nodes between clusters, how do you reason about which nodes to move? And like, if you have to do like things like you have to preempt some workloads or things like that, how do you reason about those things? And uh, 
The other thing is that typically Slurm clusters, they have a way of operating where you, you have multiple users. They get allocations in, let's say, node hours or things like that. And the scheduler then tries to do fair share scheduling and uh, to manage you know, the resources allocated to these users. And so these are typically uh, set up for certain windows. How, how would that have, like, get managed if you suddenly take away some resources from the Slurm cluster to the Kubernetes cluster? So it seems like there needs to be a little bit of uh, you know, either some resource management layer to this. Well, uh, Slurm itself is a resource manager. Uh, I, I see Tim on the room. Tim, could you help me with the second one? Uh, I think you are the best person to answer this one. Tim is saying that his microphone is not working, but maybe oh. the, mis the misunderstanding. Ah, it does. Go now. ahead, go ahead. Go, go, go. Sorry, I was uh, trying to fix the mic problem. So what was the question again? Oh, I'm sorry. I was referring to Tim uh, Wigbert. Uh, but oh, okay. yeah, <laughs> I, I didn't say there was another team in the room. But yeah, actually, so I see a couple of Slurm developers here in, in the in in the room. But for the first question is, uh, how do you reason about, oh, no microphones. Uh, we need to invest in microphones <laughs> here. Uh, how, how do we reason about the resource management between the two clusters? So that's why uh, on the last slide, I had a picture on like a central uh, control plane, right? Like in multi-cluster ecosystems, usually what you have is like a cluster that you call like a management cluster. And it's a cluster with very few nodes, a compute nodes is a cluster just made for running controllers where you reason about resources, right? So uh, we are discussing, and it was discussed during this KubeCon, a couple of APIs to be able to have a cluster inventory of all the clusters that you have in your pool, and then how to make decisions out of these inventories, right? So that's how it will be done, right? Like this is a, an ongoing effort, and uh, we are working on that as as a community, right? Like there is a couple of caps open about how to do cluster inventory, and we are working towards that. The cluster inventory cap just got merged. And uh, we are working for uh, the alpha to get into the next Kubernetes release. So that's that's how we are trying to solve that problem on how do you reason on resource manage management between multiple clusters. Then how do you take a node from a running Slurm cluster and add it to a Kubernetes cluster? How is Slurm is going to uh, react to that? Uh, that I think that's a, a follow up question more suited for like like a, a slurm uh admins that by myself yeah maybe maybe just to, to clarify the the integration that uh, eduardo is describing talks to the slurm api so there there shouldn't be a need to reallocate resources right if you have your slurm cluster it stays there and you just submit things via kubernetes but you don't have to reallocate nodes was that correct eduardo yeah no uh as I uh, in in one of the slides, I showed that you can use tools like uh, Werewolf or uh, uh, Bright Computing, where you can re uh, quickly reprovision a node, like change the OS and things like that, right? So like uh, in an scenario, if you have bare metal, you ha don't have any access to the cloud, right? Like uh, sometimes like universities, uh, you have a fixed number of nodes. Sometimes you want to reprovision these nodes from being Kubernetes to being a Slurm very quickly, like in less than a minute. You can do, there are tools to do that. So uh, ideally you can like have as elastic Kubernetes Slurm situation where you have a fixed 100 nodes, but you can at some point have a bigger Kubernetes partition or then have a bigger Slurm partition in this fixed 100 node situation. Okay, thank you. So we can move to the next one, which I believe is Nikos. Uh, yeah, hello, can you hear me again? Yep, go ahead. Yep. Okay, so this may be a bit uh, on the other side and a bit more provocative, but uh, so from my perspective, I am on the complete opposite end of most people here. We are mostly working on HPCs on the computer center side, 
I used to work for CMS, which is the virtual organization that actually submits jobs to the uh, to the HPCs, to supercomputers. So for CMS, we're using it's the Condor, and then from it's the Condor, we had Gap to do a translation to Slurm, and now this adds another layer to from Slurm to go to Kubernetes. So my question is: now we're three layers deep. Has there been any proposal, or has in, has uh, people looked into submitting jobs directly to Kubernetes, or at least having an entry point like native to Kubernetes that is can coexist with a Slurm cluster without going through these many translation layers? Yeah, I, I can I can reply quickly to that one. So there there are a couple of projects. There's a batch working group. I think Victoria is here, so if she can jump in, she's the best one to talk about there, this there are two working groups here by the way right yeah yeah <laughs> no but i mean i mean for the native kubernetes uh yeah, which yeah. was the question so a... there's there, there there's this uh batch working group that has been working on this project q and uh, extensions to jobs and job sets that uh, aim at exactly that making kubernetes native uh, as a scheduler to to this kind of workloads. And then all the other tools can rely on this uh, primitives. Uh, is Victoria still here? Victoria is here. Yeah, I am here, but I don't know anything more about it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> all right, Alex, do you wanna add something? Yeah, um, maybe just a uh, PSA on those two working groups. Uh, they were mentioned at the beginning of Eduardo's talks, but um, there seem to be a lot of people here who are very interested in this topic. And the, I, I lead one of those co conversations, the batch working group for the CNCF, where this kind of conversation is exactly the conversation we have every time. So if you're interested in this kind of conversation, uh, Eduardo, it might be great to have you come and talk in that group as well. Um, but yeah, the, just to let people know, there are more conversations than just this one going on about this very thing. Um, please come. I'll, I'll I'll hit a uh, a link down in the in the chat if anyone's interested. Um, and the one that I run is separate from the one that Victoria uh, is involved with more, uh, which is as people have been saying, just directly related to Q and all that kind of stuff. I had a question about um, uh, Slunk, and if anyone has seen it or heard from it recently, and uh, how that compares. And my understanding is that it has a bit more of the um, addressing some of the questions in the chat about balancing um, Slurm resources and Kubernetes resources within the same cluster. Whereas I think here, you've described more just sort of static clusters. One is Slurm, one is Kubernetes stuff. I, th I think Slunk is a bit more integrated. Do you have any feelings on that? Yeah, uh, that's why I made uh, a lot of uh, point on that slide on where you run into synchronization problems, right? Like uh, two, three years ago, I was part of a project where we were trying to use the uh, a scheduler plugin to change the regular uh, scheduling for Kubernetes to Flux. That is a uh, uh, Livermore uh, based uh, scheduler that is kind of like similar to Slurm. Um, and the thing is, it works when you are talking like 100 nodes or down. When you start having like 1,000 nodes or more than 1,000 nodes, then you end up in this problem where you have this baby scheduler living inside Kubernetes, and Kubernetes has to be telling this baby scheduler all the time how all the nodes are going, right? So that's why I, I was I'm making a point on where the synchronization starts to get very complex, right? Like you need to be so Kubernetes, you need to have a controller that is basically getting the information from all the nodes in Kubernetes, and the kubelet as it is right now is not the best HPC. Uh, node-based daemon for uh, decision making like a slurm, right? Like it, it, is, it won't feed a slurm with the right information to make optimized scheduling decisions. So uh, projects like Slurm, uh, I, I don't agree with them on where, like, yeah, they will work on small clusters, 
But uh, again, when you start talking about these big clusters, like thousands of nodes, you will run into a state synchronization issues. Because at some point, uh, a slurm that is running on pods, it's not going to know the state of the world as Kubernetes knows it, right? So then you are going to deploy a job. A slurm will think that the left side of the cluster is busy uh, and the right side is, is, is available. But it, it could oh, no. I, I, I just asked just too complicated of a question, I suppose. I, I'm sorry, it's all my fault. Yeah. I had mic issues earlier, and it was the, uh, the platform, so maybe something's going on in the background. Talking about optimized scheduling, right? Like high performance computing, you will start running into situations, right? So that's why I feel like a slurm should be that's that's why I said at the beginning, this is my take on this situation. A slurm should leave uh, standalone, install it as it is recommended, and we just interact with it, right? Like we just interact with a slurm. And we can we can then interact with Slurm and make it uh, be elastic with these uh, tools as I've been mentioning, but not having a Slurm to like having any scheduler living inside another scheduler is a situation you don't want to live in. Okay, so out of interest of time because we only have like one minute and a half left. Apologies. Um, I think that we'll thank Eduardo a lot for the presentation and. Uh, also, everyone for attending. This was a very, very well attended and um, active discussion. So clearly, we have to continue. Uh, we have another uh, meeting on the same topic scheduled for two two weeks from now. Diego, I see you're here, so you're all good to present in two weeks. Yep. 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 So Diego also gave a presentation at KubeCon uh, two weeks ago. And uh, we can hear about uh, what he's been working on with Interlink. Uh, what we could also do, if you want, because all, uh, everyone is here, if you want to present on topic on any subject, uh, reach out and we can schedule. Uh, we probably would be useful also to get an update on Q and what they've been working on uh, around jobs and job sets at some point. So I'll, I'll bring that one up and put it in the schedule at some point all sounds good it looks like the uh, slurm folks are working on something similar to sunk if i'm reading the chat correctly so just wanted to suggest maybe if they ever want to present nathan you're here is nathan's mic not working ah, yeah yeah, yeah, we can. We might. Um, just I don't have. We don't have anything planned right now, so I'll get back to you. Awesome. Yeah, happy to follow the, follow up as well. And um, other than that, I think uh, thank you so much, everyone, for attending. Thanks, Priyanka, for for attending as well. And uh, yeah, talk in two weeks, and let's follow it up on uh, on Slack as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Ricardo, for hosting. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.